G'day mates, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video was actually supposed to be my EU Grand Final Drop Spot Breakdown. I have it all recorded, that's gonna drop tomorrow morning before the EU Grand Finals go live, but I just got done watching the Epic Whale Cup and I have to cover this. We had so much crazy stuff go down. We had Day sleeping in through game one, which left Scented Edgy Commandment unable to play. They took to Twitter, obviously not happy, and then everyone started attacking Day, saying that he stayed up all night talking talking to e-girls. He was AFKing mid-tournament to FaceTime people. Just absolutely crazy. We then had, before the tournament even started, we had Booger, Bizzle, Clicks, and Scrubs get accused of going to grief Epic Whale because they wanted to drop at Sweaty Sands, which is their drop, which was also Epic Whales. The tournament ended up being crazy. The last game only had 64 people queue into it because everyone was just griefing. People were going to sleep. Teams couldn't connect. It was just insanity. And at the end of today's video, I also also want to talk about Scented again because my man just joined FaZe, which is huge for the Fortnite community and him, of course. If you guys didn't know, in one of my most recent videos about the new controller scroll wheel mod you can get from Controller Scroller, I actually ran a giveaway to celebrate that because I thought it was an awesome product. I wanted to buy it a giveaway to one of you guys. So please, if this is you, make sure you check your email because you are the lucky winner. A lot of the tweets surrounding this whole day situation have been deleted, but I'll try to cover it as best I can and show you the tweets that are still there because I don't like to screenshot tweets and show them if people deleted them. If they deleted them, that's it. I understand. But basically, the tournament started today with Day not waking up for game number one. He just fell asleep. He just got on. He got to his PC right on time. As you can see from this clip that Edgy posted, they readied up like two minutes before game one started and they just didn't get in. That obviously led to all the guys taking to Twitter, freaking out. You had Scented tweeting out, looking for one for future squads. Guys, I'm not even mad. I'm just confused. Everyone was super confused. Scented was tweeting out, can someone snake on another team to come play with us? Which almost worked. You almost had D-Roller leaving from playing with Teo's team because Chimp has school tomorrow. So he couldn't finish the tournament. So D-Roller was going to play with them to fill in for their teammate that slept in because he stayed up talking to girls. Bro, like Fortnite seriously sounds like a joke as an esport when it comes to stuff like this. Like, I just, I can't believe what I'm saying, but this is true. Now, because Centered went to Twitter, obviously a bunch of people in the community started making fun of Day. They started attacking Day, which led him to then start tweeting out. And that's where things got a little bit uglier. At first, Centered seemed pretty chill about it. So did Edgy, so did everyone. But then when Day started tweeting, that's what kind of kicked everything off and it started to go a bit more drama mode. Day ended up tweeting out, I was tired as sh so I tried to take a nap for like a couple minutes that I ended up missing first game, but nothing I can do about it. Just going to go back to sleep, GG's. And that's what kind of got people a little bit mad. He then tweeted out, I don't care what any of y'all say. To be honest, this is a literally one tournament I missed out of all the tournaments I've been in. Y'all acting like I missed the whole tournament. It was just one game. And this is where people got a little bit crazy as well because, you know, it was kind of underplaying what he did. He did leave the team down as well. It's just, it wasn't a great way to respond to it. And then he said, this Fortnite Combra can't take no one serious. He kind of went on. He kept tweeting stuff like this. He said, also, instead of complaining, just play the next five games and see how it goes. It's not hard to come back. That's when he kind of called our sentence. So he put the blame back on then, who was like, yeah, I slept through the game, but you guys don't want to play out the last five games. And that's when Scented honestly responded super maturely. Like, I like the way Scented handled this. He ended up saying, top four on West with five games isn't great. We specifically told you to make sure you were awake. Vibes were bad. Plus, you fell asleep during semis slash when AFK to FaceTime people three to four times, but you're calling us weird on Twitter. He then responded again to himself saying, I'm not even flaming you. You're just calling us weird on Twitter and complaining about us not playing the last five out, but we have valid reasons. Center then came out and tweeted, please don't say anything mean today happens, we'll move on and find someone who takes competitive Fortnite seriously. So a little bit of jab there at the end, obviously not taking it seriously. And I think that's pretty fair to say. If you're leaving tournaments to go FaceTime people and take a nap and then you miss game one because you fall asleep because you stayed up all night and that's why you're too tired to play when you knew you had a tournament next day, I do think that's a pretty fair statement. I know people are going to throw around the e-girl thing and or he was up all night talking to an e-girl and everyone's going to make fun of him for that. I don't like those personal 
stuff, man. I don't like the personal jabs in there. Whatever the reason is, though, I talked about this. Same thing happened in OCE. We had Skit sleep in through qualifiers, so his team couldn't make FNCS. He let the team down, and I had the same approach. I don't care what you stayed up for. If you know that you have a tournament the next day and you have people's livelihoods relying on you, people who are grinding the game as hard, if not harder than you, you, you owe it to them to make sure that you go to bed and you take it as seriously as them. It's not fair if you want to stay up for whatever reason. I'm not going to say there's talking to e-girls, even if it's just playing creative, watching anime, literally anything. It's just, you know that you're going to be letting the team down the next day. So I think Centered's response was fair. Day then did come around and ended up apologizing. He basically said, I apologize to everyone, was just really tired and accidentally fell asleep. Won't happen again though. So I think Day's learned his lesson from this. Centered ended up tweeting out, you live and you learn. Good night, fellas. So everyone seems to be pretty happily concluded on this. I think it's going to affect Day's competitive kind of, I don't know, I want to say like career going forward. People will probably remember this and it doesn't look good that he's not taking it as seriously, but he's got a good team coming into FNCS. I hope he's focusing up for FNCS. I mean, it starts in two days, maybe because this was a squad tournament. It was a creator cup. It was 10 grand on the line. Wasn't taking it as seriously. I don't know. Day is a fantastic player. He's a phenomenal player. For the most thing, as I'm aware, he's been grinding his ass off to get to this point. So I guess maybe it was just a one day of lapse of judgment, which has just gotten a whole bunch of attention on him. Not trying to excuse what he did but if centered the team that ha has been affected by this has moved on from it they've forgiven him and they're all just going to go their separate ways i don't like that the community tends to keep kind of drilling these things in and keep attacking the person and not moving on like the players involved Moving on to now the drama that was involving Clix's team. So going into the grand finals, they qualified as well. Same as Epic Whale's team who didn't qualify because it's his cup. He got invited straight into the finals. Now Clix's team obviously knows Sweaty really, really well. Sweaty Sands is where they were going to qualify into the tournament. They went there for round one and two. Epic Whale's team wasn't playing. Now coming into finals, they were going to drop there. And I didn't really question that. I didn't see that as Clix's team griefing them. I thought it was unfortunate that they happened to be going the same drop spot, but it's the drop they know it's a tournament they qualified and they wanted to do well but obviously with the fortnite community this got turned into a whole bunch of drama you had a whole bunch of people tweeting out f bizzle you even had nrg making a tweet talking about no way epic whale gets griefed in his own tournaments you then had bizzle kind of feeding into this tweeting out defend the sands then after their first few games bizzle also tweeted out landing damn rest of the games because he wanted to make sure that people knew they weren't griefing clicks bizzle booger and um scrubs had a really good run in the tournament they started off, they had uncontested Hydro Dam because Centered's team didn't play. Otherwise, there's a good chance they went sweaty. But I don't see why Bizzle's team is copying hate for this. Like, I get it, it's Epic Whale's Cup, don't get me wrong. That is a really annoying coincidence and it sucks. But at the same time, Clix's team wanted to play out the tournament the way they wanted to play it. They've qualified fair and square. They played well up until that point. They didn't decide last minute, let's go drop on Epic Whale. Ha, it's his tournament, let's grief him. It's their drop spot. It has been literally this entire season. There's no team that is more synonymous with a drop spot. I feel like then Clix's team at Sweaty. They have not changed from there at all. And if they want to do well in their tournament, I get why dropping on Epic Whale isn't the best idea, but there was no other really good free drop spots. And then as soon as one presented itself, which was Hydro Dam, they went there despite having no practice. It ended up making their tournament not go too well. They were doing pretty well, but they didn't know the rotates. They didn't know the surge routes. They started getting contested their last few games. They ended up not playing the last game. So I just wanted to make it clear in this video that I don't see really anything wrong with what Clix's team was going to do. I don't understand why they were getting so much hate and why they were still getting hate at the end of the tournament for even considering dropping there. Epic Whale ended up winning the tournament. His team played phenomenal. They struggled in the first game, but really brought it back in the end. They won their tournament. I think the first time we've seen a creator win their own cup, which is awesome and I think is totally worth celebrating. And and if anything, I've gained a lot of respect for Clix's team for deciding not to go sweaty to go Hydro Dam because a lot of people see that as an easy out. Oh no, they just wanted to go the better drop to have a better tournament. No, they, they genuinely went there to try not to grief Epic Whale. They were very aware of not wanting to grief them. At one point, the chats were freaking out. Everyone was saying that Epic Whale's team was flaming Booger's team for even considering it. They started to get a bit heated and they still didn't drop on them at sweaty. Genuinely, I really do think that Bizzle, Clix, uh, Booger and scrubs tried to be the bigger people in this situation and they still got burned for it. 
I don't want a bunch of you guys coming at me saying I'm a Clicks fanboy or saying I'm, I'm just siding with them because they're the bigger names. If you guys have seen any content on my channel or you know anything about me, I would consider one of my closer friends out of the pros to be Reet. I've been helping this dude and showing love to him since he had like two viewers. He really is one of my favorite people in the pro scene. I would have a tendency to side with him over anyone. But as always with my videos, I'm trying to look at this objectively. I'm trying to let my bias affect things. And I do really think that Booger's team had every right to go sweaty if they wanted to and they still decided not to which is massive props to them and i think we should focus on the positives here and celebrate that epic wales team dominated in their own cup i'm so proud of how well they played i know the tournament towards the end turned into a bit of a grief fest like i said earlier in the intro the last game only had 64 people queue into it it just went really really late for na people it was going until like 2 3 a.m in the morning for them so people lost focus they didn't care only top four got money and they started griefing but while the games were in insanely stacked i do think epic whales team was the best squad on the day and he won his own tournament that is super exciting other notable mention here has to be Acorn, Jack, Slacks, and Illis coming in second in the uh, Epic Whale Cup. That team is just so consistent right now. Jack, Acorn, and Slacks are winning everything. Jack and Acorn even especially, both popping off in their own rights in solos, dominating together in duos, now popping off in trios, setting point records, now winning squads. Like, this team has to be up there on your list right now as one of the most consistent teams, not just in NA East, but in the world. These players are winning at every single game mode. And I still feel like not anywhere near enough people talk about them. Before I move on to talking about phase and center, the last thing I want to talk about for the Epic Whale Cup was the legendary run of Nick Merckx. Nick Merckx, Cypher, PK, Coop, and Nifer were so, so close to qualifying in the end. It came down to their very last game. And like I tweeted the other day, this team has some of the worst luck I have ever seen when it comes to needing qualifying games. They managed to get rushed, unfortunately, in Storm by Wavy Jacobs' team. Coop got headshot sniped. They pushed in for the loot. The other three had to disengage. Nick Merckx went back into Storm with medkits to do a rescue mission on Coop. They got the reboot off and they had to do max zones. I'm not talking max first. I'm talking max first, second, third, fourth. Then I think they got maybe a decent half-half in fifth zone. Then they got a complete opposite first rotating off a mountain. Everything broke down and they just fell short, but they had such a good run. It was so much fun to watch. Again, I'm absolutely loving Nick Merckx and Cypher PK stepping up into competitive because, man, it creates some of the best storylines and some of the most fun watching a tournament I have seen in such a long time. Last but not least, we had Centered announced that he had joined FaZe. And then this isn't just like your normal player joining a normal org. This is so exciting for me for a number of reasons. Firstly, because it's Centered. I'm so happy to see that Centered's uh, contract expired with Liquid one day, and then he's instantly picked up the next. So he had this in the works before his Liquid contract expired. So he was a free agent for less than 24 hours. So he deserves to be as well. Centered again, in my opinion, one of the best players in the world right now. Absolutely phenomenal. But what this means for the community and why I'm so excited is FaZe picked up a player that doesn't really make content. And that means a lot. Yes, Centered makes montages, but it's not really like a whole bunch of videos. He doesn't stream. He's talked about how little he likes streaming. He really is a comp player who plays to place. And that means FaZe, one of the biggest orgs in the world, has seen value in signing a player who just plays to place on leaderboards, which is so good for the ecosystem. The more money that orgs put into players that are just placing, not just making content, content is huge. You've got NRG that's picking up massive players. At one point, they were picking up players like Edgy, obviously his trio and duo mate who weren't making content. But after Saf became a free agent and they didn't pick up Saf, it really did confirm that they're not going for players that are going to place. They're really just going for content creators who also play competitive. We've had so many big orgs, TSM, Liquid, C9, so many big orgs either drop their roster or continue not signing them like Unknown Army. So seeing a big orgs or step up and sign a player based just on their ability to place, which obviously centered is, is so good for the ecosystem. I also wanted to clear something up as well. Like people always talk about this with Unknown Army, you know, with Macwood, with Saf, or they got dropped. They don't get dropped. Their contract expires. It's a very big difference and you've got to be careful on that terminology. When someone gets dropped, that means their org has taken legal action to terminate their contract early because they've breached the terms of it. That's huge. That means they've done something really bad personally or they've just not living up to their contract's expectations. Either way, that is really bad for a player. Not continuing a contract though is very normal. When players get signed like Unknown Army, like players like Centered from Liquid, it's in 
a different time. It's when orgs are pumping huge money into players because maybe World Cup's coming up or there's more money in the industry. And then a year or two years later, the situation has changed and they can't continue their contract or they don't see the value in keeping that player. It's not an insult to the player. It doesn't mean they're bad. It doesn't mean they got dropped. The contract just expired. It's very normal in esports. And I just want to make sure that people understand that when they talk about these players. Because when I get told, oh my God, Unknown Army got dropped. I'm like, whoa, what did he do? And then I go and check and then NRG's made a really nice tweet just saying, oh, cool, okay, contract's expired. Really hope he, you know, all the best for his future, blah, blah, blah. That's just a contract expiring. That's totally normal. That is not being dropped. Like I said, guys, tomorrow's video is going to be the full EU Grand Final Drop Spot Breakdown. I had it all filmed. It was all ready to go up, but I'm now recording this video at like 11 p.m. my time because I want to make sure this video goes up tomorrow because a bunch of you guys are going to be asking what happens. You guys look to me to keep you updated. The EU video is not going to change by tomorrow. The drop spots are pretty much set in stone, so I wanted to get this one out first, and that video is coming, I promise. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please chuck a like on it. Let me know in the comments section down below and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel it would mean the world to me thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one